Borderlands is an FPS RPG and has an open 3D world. The world itself suits the FPS genre as there are many industrial parts of the world which is commonly seen in FPS games. However, because it is also an RPG, they have added they have added many unique areas for the player to discover, making the game still have the sense of thrill and exploration that you would expect in an open world RPG game. Borderlands has a very unique and well-known visual style. The environment and everything in it has a cel-shaded look, meaning that they are outlined in thick black. The world also has a slightly cartoony look. This partnered with the shell shading makes for a cleanly executed world. The developers said that they wanted to add more colour and variety to the game's world. I think that they achieved this goal and it makes the world a lot less bland, making this world more enjoyable in Borderlands 2. Borderlands is very clearly aimed at an older audience. There are many alien creatures and areas that may frighten children or discomfort them. There are also very vulgar signs placed around the world of Borderlands, using foul language. In many places there are dead bodies and bones. The world uses a lot of dirty colours, such as browns and greys. Borderlands is based on a dusty alien planet, so the colours must have reflect that. Many of the objects, such as guns as well as buildings, look very crude, as if they had been made out of spare parts or been made in a hurry. Borderlands is available on a variety of different platforms, such as PC, Xbox 360 and PS3. Little Big Planet is a side-scrolling adventure game. The world in Little Big Planet fits the genre perfectly. The world is made out of many different fabrics and other materials, as you play a tiny stitched character. So the world appears to be made out of everyday materials, along with sci-fi elements such as jump pads and grappling hooks, making it easy to traverse this world. The game's visual style is that you are a miniature character in a large world. You can see just how small you are by looking at the backdrop of the world. Little Big Planet also allows you to create your own worlds using a variety of different tools. Little Big Planet has become a lot more sci fi. In the original game, there were no sci fi elements such as jump pads, paintball guns, and grappling hooks. However, I think that adding these tools have made the game have a lot more possibilities, especially when creating your own world within the game. Little Big Planet is mainly aimed at younger audiences, but it is also aimed at very creative people because of the fact that you can design your own world. In Little Big Planet 2, they added a lot more tools, making the player even able to create their own games within Little Big Planet. Because of this, I think that parts of the games are aimed at slightly older audiences as well. Little Big Planet is only available on the PS3. Red Dead Redemption is a third-person shooter based in the Wild West. The world in Red Dead Redemption is very accurate to its genre. You can see that the development team have put the time into researching what it was like to live in that time period. The majority of the world is desert terrain, with a few areas to add variety, such as an area with snow and one with a forest. The world looks very realistic and is a very believable Wild West environment. This is because of the plants, rock formations, weather and so on. There are also NPCs that roam around, going about their lives. This makes it easier for the player to be fully immersed in the game. The world in Red Dead Redemption is aimed at, at older audiences. The world is shown to be very harsh and unforgiving. There are dangerous wildlife and humans. The game is developed by Rockstar Games, who are known for making games for an older audience. This is one of those games. Red Dead Redemption has gone for a realistic, believable approach for its world. The tone of the world is very serious, there are many dangerous aspects of the world. There are also a lot of browns in the deserts, but there are a few more colours in other areas like the forest or the snowy mountains. This game is only available on the Xbox 360 and PS3. The main character in Dark Souls 2. The, the character's story is fairly concealed and must be discovered from NPC dialogue and items. You are playing as a man or female, depending on the character you made in the character creation screen. Human that is turned into a hollow, which is pretty much an undead. You first arrive at the house of three old women who proceed to tell you the details of your story. 
which to put it simply, you must travel across the land to find the cure in order to stop yourself from becoming fully hollow. It is told that you are not the first person to it is told that you are not the first person to speak to these women and attempt this quest. This could perhaps make the player connect more with this character because they have a chance of being that first person to finish the quest and find the cure. Perhaps make the player connect more with this character before Perhaps make the player connect more with this character because they have the chance of being that first person to finish up. The physical appearance and gender of your character completely depend on how the player chooses to customize it. There are many different options you can change. There are many different options. The physical appearance and gender of your character completely depend on how the player chooses to customize it. There are many different options you can change. You can change the hairstyle, hair color, physique, gender, body size, such as skinny, fat, average, and so on. There are also a very wide variety of really detailed face customization options. This is so the player could maybe make the character look like him or herself, which would help the player connect with the character on an emotional level. This is because if the character looks like the player, they will be more inclined to do what they can to keep him or her alive. The movement in Dark Souls 2 is very fluid and makes combat enjoyable because it's the movement in Dark Souls 2 is very fluid and makes combat enjoyable because it's easier to time your rolls and attacks at the right time. Also, the more your character dies, the more they look hollow. At the beginning of the game, Joel starts out as a kind father, caring for his daughter Sarah. Then when the infection spreads, his daughter gets shot and dies. This is the moment we see an emotional outcry from Joel. This is a powerful moment for the player as well. Joel was shown to be a genuinely good person and father, so for us to see him lose his daughter undeservedly, it makes us connect with him and share the same amount of sadness. Twenty years later, we see a far more stern and frustrated Joel, because he hasn't got over the loss of his daughter. He refuses to have any sort of emotional attachment to any other character. Later in the game, he meets the main NPC, Ellie, he soon starts to become protective of her. He soon starts to become protective of her and start to act as if she was his daughter Sarah. Joel is a middle-aged male. For the majority of the game, he is shown to be depressed and stressed, not allowing for any emotional attachments. He has messy facial hair and rugged clothes. He looks like this because it shows the impact of the loss of his daughter at the beginning of the game. It also shows how much the world has changed since the infection. He simply doesn't care very much about his appearance. His rugged, dirty look also reflects what the current world has come to since the start of the infection. The character's emotions and movements are perfectly presented thanks to the technology behind the game, which for the most part was motion capture. The in-house engine is a behemoth of animation muscle and environmental muscle. Also, the lip-syncing and acting were perfect. This made it easier to see the characters as genuine people and made it easier to relate to them. The AI in The Last of Us is pretty impressive. The main NPC, Ellie, for most of the game, follows you around for the majority of the game until later on in the game when you do in fact play as her. She isn't a nuisance and doesn't get in the way or take away from the gameplay experience, as she never compromises the player's position. She will stay out of sight and keep quiet. She will also do things like spot enemies for Joel and is needed to reach high up areas where Joel wouldn't normally be able to reach. Also, occasionally, there are NPCs that help fight the enemies for you. The enemies take cover when shot at, but do to take predetermined paths, making the stealth mission somewhat predictable. In Battlefield 4, there are many parts of the feedback interface to make sure the player has all the information they need to be successful. The permanent aspects of the interface are The minimap. This provides locations of teammates, objectives, and under some circumstances, it will show enemies. Then there is the health and ammo section. There are both usually in the bottom right of the screen and are crucial pieces of information in FPS games because you can adapt your playstyle depending on this very information. When you get a kill, or get killed, there are several indications on the feedback interface. In Battlefield 4, this is shown in the centre of the screen twice, one showing the weapon that got the kill, and the other showing the achieved points for the kill. 
Your kill and weapon used is also shown in the top right of the screen, along with your teammates' and enemies' kills. Objectives are made clear by appearing on the map, as well as being shown in the world as a marker above each objective. This also shows the distance between your character and the objective. In a much earlier version of Battlefield, Battlefield 1942, the feedback interface is drastically different with many features being moved to different locations on the screen. As newer Battlefield games have been released, the feedback interface has been slightly modified. In Battlefield 1942, the feedback interface is very cluttered and could easily confuse players. They possibly changed this in newer Battlefields to make the game's useful information easier to find and read, which is crucial for a fast-paced FPS game as in most circumstances you won't have much time to make decisions. Battlefield also has some context-sensitive perspectives, such as aiming down your scope, which doesn't show any information. This helps immerse the player and adds a sense of realism because it feels as if you're looking through the eyes of your character. In Forza Motorsport 4, the look of the feedback interface is very simple and clean. There isn't much information on the screen, just your position, laps, lap times, a minimap and a speed gauge. All of which are fairly small and placed into all four different corners. They are placed in the corner so the players can focus on the middle of the screen, which is where the road is. If you use the first person's perspective, there are a few more features you can see to help use and add to the realism such as the mirrors, the view itself and how you can see the character's arms, which makes it feel as if you are the driver, the car's own speed gauge opposed to the UI's gauge. However, if you are using the third person's perspective, the features are not available to you. The feedback interface in Forza Motorsport 4 is extremely generic in terms of the racing genre, placing most aspects of the UI in the very same places across different racing games. This is mainly because as a racing game player, you will have become accustomed to this layout of feedback interface as it is widely used. So heavily changing it probably wouldn't have a positive response from players. It's also very simple, making it easy for new players to understand. FMV stands for Full Motion Video. This technique involved creating games using real life videos. This technique was not hugely popular due to the limits that it set on itself, such as only having a certain amount of outcomes for each scene.